Hello, my name is Sean Sperry, and I am going to do a short overview of Spectrum Protect Plus 10.1.3. Uh, it's been a little while since we did an overview of Spectrum Protect Plus, and we've added a lot of features since we introduced the product uh, a couple of years ago. So I wanted to, as of February 2019, just do a quick overview and also give you a uh, a quick demo of the GUI. So Spectrum Protect Plus is designed to be modern data protection product uh, and really one of its primary goals is to be easy to deploy and uh, and easy to manage. So we've tried to improve the the ease of use factor uh, considerably as we've moved forward with this product. We have a intuitive user interface and uh, we do instant recovery and data access for a large variety of or at least two hypervisors VMware and Hyper-V and a large variety of applications which we're going to discuss uh, in the next slide. It is a role-based access product so you can give access to the GUI of your system administration. Uh, uh, for your system administrators and we also support this data reuse concept so Spectrum Protect Plus allows you to automate automate your DevOps your dev and test to do deployments for testing and uh, for cloning we support complete automation of the tool using REST API's so Again, just a modern interface, and that's how the product was designed from the beginning. At version 10.1.3 of Spectrum Protect Plus, we now support VMware and Hyper-V. And we continue to add to the list of hypervisors that we support, of applications that we support. So we now support Microsoft SQL, Oracle, DB2, MongoDB and Microsoft Exchange uh, Server. And just as a reminder, the applications are both physical and virtual, whereas the hypervisors are obviously only virtual. We do support data protection and recovery and data reuse, including DevOps, reporting, cloning, etc. Now I want to do a brief overview of the architecture. I'm really not going to hit this slide in too much detail, but I just want to give you an idea of, uh, of how things work. Uh, the Spectrum Protect Plus server is delivered as a virtual machine, and it runs either on-premises in Hyper-V or VMware or in the IBM cloud. And we use API calls to pull the data, shall we say, from either the applications that we support, Oracle, SQL, Mongo, Exchange, or from the hypervisors. Data is backed up and stored in a vSnap server or a vSnap repository, which is a block-based device, and that is where we're storing the instant re recoverable snapshots that we create we also have the ability to do replication so we can take a copy of that vSnap repository and send it to a different site or a remote data center for uh, for protection from disaster recovery beginning in 10.1.3 one of the new features we have is to do an s3 offload either to a cloud or on-premise object storage so that's what you see here and we also support offloading to Spectrum Protect using that S3 interface as of version 8.1.7 now as of this release we support container storage pools which include block and disk uh, we intend to add tape support to that to the S3 interface in the upcoming uh, release. So that's the quick 
overview, uh, I'm going to do a quick demo for you and just look at the GUI uh, with you and maybe do a backup and a restore. So let's do that now. Okay, so uh, this is Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.3, and uh, I'm just going to do some quick overview of just some of the menu selections and, and how things work in Spectrum Protect Plus. Uh, I'll start out with storage. As you can see here, we have uh, backup storage that we have defined. Our vSnap repositories are defined under disk since they are block based storage and as you can see here we have a primary and a secondary uh, site for vSnap storage to find so this is where we are actually doing our backups beginning in version spec 10.1.3 uh, we also support offloading to the cloud or to spectrum protect protect itself uh, I happen to have a cloud repository defined and my cloud happens to be Azure although we also support IBM cloud object storage and uh, and AWS s3 storage uh, but for me, I am offloading to Azure in this particular uh, demo. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just take a look at the SLAs in Spectrum Protect Plus. And the reason I want to do that is everything is SLA driven in Spectrum Protect Plus. So all of the schedules, all of the locations, uh, etc. are driven by the SLA policies that you define in the product. And as you can see here, Spectrum Protect Plus comes out of the box with three SLA policies defined uh, bronze, gold, and silver. There's really no limit to the number you can define here, so you can go ahead and add as many as you want and, uh, and apply systems or uh, hypervisors or applications to them. Uh, I just went with the out of the box here, but I really want to look at some of the settings in the silver policy just to give you some idea. Uh, our target site just defines the vSnap server that we are backing up to. So in our case, we have a primary and a secondary site. So we have one vSnap server uh, there. This frequency gives you how often and when the backup or data protection operation will occur. So as you can see here, Mine is going to happen every one day at uh, midnight 10. And then once you back up the either the virtual machine set or the application, this controls the retention. So as you can see, my operational recovery for this particular example is going to be there for three weeks. You can set that to really whatever you want, days, months, years, uh, etc. Now, from a replication perspective, you can also set up a replication schedule that allows you to replicate to a second vSnap server. This is typically used for disaster recovery. And again, this is when the replication is going to occur, the start time, and the site where the vSnap uh, server is. So I define my site to be secondary. If you were using different cities or different locations, you may use your data center name here. And finally, Spectrum Protect has plus has the ability to offload to either cloud storage or a 
Spectrum Protect uh, server. And this defines when the offload is going to occur, so how often the offload is going to occur, and the start time, and again, the uh, retention on the offload target. So for me, I in this particular policy, I'm offloading to Microsoft Azure, and I'm going to keep my uh, offloads for two years. Now, all of this is basically incremental forever, so this is only doing change data. The intention with Spectrum Protect Plus is you'll do all your operational uh, storage on vSnap and keep it for some number of days, weeks, whatever your policy might dictate. And then periodically you'll offload to one of these long-term uh, storage, which is theoretically less expensive, either the cloud or Spectrum Protect, and keep it for the long term. So as you can see, my, uh, my long term cloud offload is, uh, is going to be kept for two years, whereas my vSnap copy is only being kept for three weeks. Uh, so that is SLAs. Uh, I'll just show you a quick example of a hypervisor here. Applying the hypervisor is pretty simple. I happen to have Hyper-V set up here. And you just click on the hypervisor. And then you can go ahead and select uh, a particular machine or set of machines and apply a SLA to it, in my case, Silver. Now, if this were VMware, we also support tagging and folder-based backups for picking your, uh, your uh, policy, your SLA policy, and applying it to a set of VMs. Uh, things pretty much work the same way for applications. So I happen to have SQL Server set up. And you can see I have a SQL Server 2017 instance and... Uh, I have a silver SLA applied to that database over there. So we can pick up the database or the whole instance based on that SLA. Once you apply the SLAs, the backups, offloads, replications just run uh, on the scheduled basis. You can also do things uh, from an ad hoc. Uh, perspective. Uh, just a couple more of the new things in 10.1.3. Uh, we now have we have improved our dashboard. We're trying to make the product easy to use and more feature rich from an operations perspective. So we've improved our dashboard. And as you can see here, you now have a uh, uh, currently running jobs. Uh, pane, a history plane that gives you all of the successful warning and fail jobs and your success rate, information about the capacity you have available in your vSnap repository, your devices that might be inactive or full, what data reduction rate and compression rates you're given, and the uh, total number of sources and policies that you have in your uh, environment. Beginning in 10.1.3, there's also a new jobs and operations screen that makes things uh, easier to manage. Here you see if the policy and job list, this is the the view that you used to have uh, in previous versions where you could sort on info warnings errors and see the particular jobs and then expand down and uh, look at the look at the job history uh, but in 10.1.3 we are now uh, added this running jobs pane and this job history pane I just had a job running. I was running from the uh, 
running a restore from a cloud offload, a Microsoft Azure cloud offload that has obviously finished now. So uh, I don't have any running jobs, but in terms of my job history, uh, you can see all of your job history from this window along with the, uh, the job logs. So for instance, if I wanted to filter on just the fail job that I have, uh, I had a bad uh, mapping here. So that job failed and you can go out there and, uh, and see the particular reason. Or if you wanted to see your successful jobs, you can do uh, you can do that. So that's a quick overview of Spectrum Protect Plus and the dashboard. Uh, I really won't dig down into this. We have a lot of other YouTube videos that go through the particular features of doing a backup, doing a restore, uh, doing offloads to Spectrum Protect, uh, doing replication, etc. So I would highly encourage you to just go out there and take a look at those videos uh, to, uh, to see the other uh, features and functions and get some detailed demos on each of those. So I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you in a upcoming video.